I'm Meg Only, the Andrea V. Laporte Associate Curator at the Institute of Contemporary Art, and I've co-curated the exhibition, Ulysses Jenkins, Without Your Interpretation, which surveys the artist's career spanning 50 years and is on view at the ICA from September 17th through December 30th, 2021. I'm Erin Cristobal, I'm the Associate Curator at the Hammer Museum and the co-curator of Ulysses Jenkins Without Your Interpretation. Uh, the first time I came across Ulysses' work, I think is the same as Aaron. Uh, both of us came across the work uh, through the landmark show, Now Dig This, which looked at black art in Los Angeles from 1960 to 1980 and was curated by Kelly Jones, uh, one of my idols in curatorial practice. And the first time I saw Ulysses was really within that exhibition. And so there was a selection of his works, um, Two Zone Transfer, Momentous Occasions, I believe without your interpretation, which is the titular work within our show also appeared. I remember coming across Ulysses' work and being really struck by it. I thought the work was so experimental, uh, so innovative and really sort of exploring video in ways that I had never seen before, especially as, uh, you know, those ways sort of um, come together with Blackness or a Black experience. For me, his work really stood out for a couple of reasons. Um, first, I'm from Los Angeles. I was born and raised. And so I was really sort of drawn to not only the exhibition, because the exhibition was really specifically looking at LA, but because I've had a focus within, um, really looking at specifically video, Ulysses was the only video artist that I saw. And so immediately I started thinking about his practice, thinking about it as how it predated a lot of artists that I'm really interested in, like Martine Sims, um, Aria Dean, other people that you know have been born and raised in Los Angeles that also work with media, that are also thinking about um, representation within popular media. And so for me, Jenkins's work really stood out. Ulysses is, such an innovative and groundbreaking artist for so many reasons. Um, you know, I think it, it's really important to situate him in this sort of burgeoning group of individuals, specifically individuals of color in Los Angeles, who are really sort of exploring, I think, the, the spectrum and the boundaries of, you know, an art practice. Um, you know, a lot of these artists at that time were not, you know, necessarily being invited into, you know, the museums or the institutions or the galleries in the city. And so they were really, you know, um, taking to the streets, really embracing performance. And, you know, Ulysses was very much the centerpiece of that. You will be a servant unto your brothers all the days of your life. And I just want to thank the Lord tonight that we have forgiveness. And I want to say, I thank the Lord tonight that we have the power over death tonight. And that we have the power of life and death. For me, Ulysses, you know, he could have had a retrospective years ago. I think there's something to me that is really befuddling when you look at his resume. He's had no major solo institutional show within, you know, a major museum. And to me, that just seems not only biased because of his race, but also the challenges around showing a multimedia artist. And so I think there's ways in which he's been sort of, um, I don't want to say like relegated, but it feels as if he did not catch on in the same way as some of his peers have. And some of that is due to, you know, not only, you know, the challenges of white supremacy within the art field, but also because of the medium specifically that he's working with. And you have to remember, like when Aaron and I, you know, started this project, we digitized a lot of works that also hadn't been seen before. There are works that we digitized that Ulysses hadn't seen since the 1970s and 1980s. And that was incredibly exciting to be able to do that and have an exhibition that could bring forth, you know, new works that no one had seen. But I also think this is an opportunity for anyone that was not familiar with Jenkins' work or slightly familiar with the work to really step back and get a chance to dive into a really eclectic practice 
of someone that's working across so many different digital technologies. In a way, I think people have had trouble placing Ulysses because he has also been, you know, a documentarian. He was also, you know, had a stint in public access television. Um, you know, he, he very much is, in my opinion, this sort of radical artist who very much sort of carved out his own path. And I think uh, people have potentially had trouble with that and sort of placing him. Uh, and so I think because of that, there really hasn't been this sort of critical scholarship around his work in a way that I feel like this show is going to provide. You protect your freedom. And let the colonial stay. Without your interpretation, the title of the show is coming from a work within this exhibition, which was both a performance and a video. And without your interpretation was really a response to a previous piece Ulysses had made, Dream City. And a critic had, you know, given their idea of what they thought the work was about. And Ulysses, you know, sort of bristled at this idea of a white critic, you know, coming in and sort of framing what he thought the work was. And he said, well, I don't need you to frame my, my work. You know, this is without your interpretation. So there's, you know, a defiance, there's a cheekiness, you know, all of that is sort of there within Ulysses that felt also really, um, it's a powerful gesture and it's a really powerful statement. And so when we decided to name the exhibition without your interpretation, which was done in conversation with Ulysses, we began thinking about, you know, other ways that we could insert his voice and really forefront, you know, what it meant to be working with an artist who had also been writing a lot of his career. One of the things that Aaron and I really discovered when we started working on this exhibition is that from 1977 until pretty much today, Ulysses has written about every single work he's ever made. So you're gonna see treatments and scores and lyrics. There was just a lot of paper to really think through. And for a video artist, I hadn't really thought that this might be one of his processes. This is one of the ways that he um, ended up producing and really thinking through his practice. If you, if you love your art and respect it too, you know, I mean, that's, that's what this thing is about. Well, this piece we're working on, it's about uncertainty, it's about the potential and, and our needs. What's wrong? Some kind of prima donna or something? You call, you call this a rehearsal? What the hell you think this is? Animal crackers? So there's four things of the exhibition, and uh, I think Meg and I were really interested in responding to those themes because those are themes that he outlines in a memoir that he wrote in the 90s called A Dog Girl Life. And we as curators, I think are very invested in sort of maintaining and you know uplifting the artist's voice. And so we really wanted to incorporate, um, I think some of the ways in which he was thinking about his work into the show. The hidden pain is written into me and through your pain. I don't and I won't be great. But for some, I think to me. When you move throughout the exhibition, um, you sort of begin within the allegory of self-empowerment. On the first floor, it's that, as well as the artists of the humble infinity. I really like to think of all of these works, you know, all of these sort of sections as, I don't wanna say interchangeable, but I'd love that you could actually start in another section and be able to move throughout the show in a similar way because it's not chronologically ordered. You really get a sense of some of the porousness of Ulysses ideas that sort of begin in the very first room and you still see some of those ideas being played out on the second floor, which is multicultural ideal and other visions, the conceptual reality. <laughs> What's really incredible about Ulysses' practice is 
you know, he was also very invested in expanded cinema and thinking through at the time, new ideas like video conferencing, telephone conferencing. And so he was using tools and sort of, you know, digital tools in ways that precede uh, Zoom or FaceTime. And I feel like he was very much an innovator in that way. And so I think, you know, coming off of, you know, a year of being on Zoom and being on FaceTime, uh, I think it's really interesting to come back to a practice that uh, sort of marks the origin story of some of these tools and technologies. And uh, just be cool. Tell everybody to be cool. I'll be there and we'll take care of biz, all right? No, nah, man, this is dead. I don't want to hear it no more. <laughs> There's videos that are within this exhibition that are literally shot blocks from my house. So there does have a lot of, I feel like this is personal in some ways. Um, Ulysses mural, uh, transportation brought art to the people that he painted in the late 1970s. That mural, you know, is something I passed every day to school from kindergarten to 12th grade. I sat in traffic. I looked at that mural. That mural is across from USC where Aaron went to undergrad. You know, it's like it, all of us feel very connected. And so for me, working with Ulysses has just been an absolute delight. And this exhibition has been absolutely informed by who Ulysses is the style in which Ulysses is creating his work. I really hope that people see this exhibition, the design of this exhibition, the literally the flow and curatorial um, methodologies behind this exhibition are really coming out from that close relationship of getting to know Ulysses. <laughs> Working with Ulysses is an incredible experience. When you have the privilege of taking on someone's retrospective, you're in deep conversation with someone and not only about their practice, but their life. Um, and so I think what has been incredible about working with Ulysses is um, he, you know, in his 75 years now of life, has really held on to, um, you know, the experimental, um, has really held on to the DIY, you know, has really held on to these sort of punk radical sensibilities that you see throughout his practice from as early as, you know, the 1960s when he's actually more of a painter, you know, to the 70s where he is, you know, starting to get into performance and obviously, you know, for the rest of his life. Ulysses is an incredible uh, thinker. Um, he's also an incredible writer. And, um, you know, not only that, he is a professor. He's been teaching at UC Irvine for decades. And he is just um, really a centerpiece of the LA art community. I mean, when you think of any major movement in this city, um, you somehow find him in the middle of it. He would refer to himself as the nomad, the nomadic griot of the city. Um, and so he is just like a, you know, a well of, of knowledge and incredible stories of, you know, so many artists I think we know and love. I'm really excited, I think, for folks to really see, um, yeah, just how important his practice is. Oh, 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 oh.